Good morning. Welcome to, welcome to St. Luke's. My name is Sam Stelter, and today is Re Reformation Sunday and confirmation for the four of us. We wish a special welcome to new visitors, especially families and friends who have come to show their love and support for us on, our, on this special day. Thanks to friends, families, and St. Luke's for cheering us on throughout the years in confirmation and not always being able to be together in person. This morning, during the prayer of intercession, we invite you to pray for all the need of healing. Now we prepare for worship as we listen to Miss Oregon and the Brass Ensemble play the prelude. Just as God's work of creation never ends, so the gifts received in baptism are renewed every day. Let us give thanks together for the life given in baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the waters of life, for water to bathe in, water to drink, for waters to play in, and waters that simply inspire wonder for water that gives life to our planet. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the words of life. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the waters of this place, for water from our tap, for rain and snow, for the Des Plaines River, the Salt Creek, and Lake Michigan. We give you thanks, O oh God, for for your salvation through water, for delivering Noah and his family through the flood waters, for leading your people Israel through the sea into freedom, for preserving your prophet Elijah through the time of drought, for guiding your people across the Jordan into a new land, for quenching the Samaritan woman's thirst with living water. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized and for all who gather here, for godparents and baptismal sponsors, for children and grandchildren, for the newly baptized, and all who are preparing for baptism, for our siblings in Christ who we have never seen, but to whom we are bound.
We give you thanks for life in Christ through your Holy Spirit, for our entry into Christ's death through these waters, for our new birth into a life of freedom and service, for our calling to be your people, sent out for the life of the world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. And defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with the ancestors. When I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was married to them, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their in in inequity uh, to remember no their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be Amen. to God. A reading from the Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every month may be silenced and, whole, and the whole world may be accountable for God. For, for no human will be justified in the sight of God by the deeds prescribed by the law, for th through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of the God has been disclosed and attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God. Through the faith in Jesus Christ, for all who believe, there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by God's grace, grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. This was shown God's righteousness. Because in divine forbiddance, God has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to provide the present time that God was righteous and God justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the faith no, but by the law of faith. For we hold the person is justified by faith apart from the works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a, sin, a slave to sin, the slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. When I first joined Confirmation, I was not the most religious person and did not understand religion as much as I do now. Over these past years of church and Confirmation, I've learned so much about being a Lutheran and what Confirmation really means. When I was first enrolled in Confirmation, I was quite confused and had many questions. I was also a little bit stressed, a little overwhelmed, I guess. But this was even before I had my very first Confirmation class. Confirmation always felt like a little drag for me. Put on some sweatpants and a sweatshirt, slide some Crocs on and head out. Back then, I did not really grasp the topic as much as I do now and did not truly understand why I was doing this. But despite all of this, I've came so far from when I began my journey, and I've gained so much knowledge on religion and truly understanding what religion means to people. I can imagine how confused I would be if I had never attended this confirmation class. One of many things that religion has taught me is that I have a culture, and that culture is a part of my identity. It has taught me that a Lutheran identity can be shaped by learning the Lutheran history. For me, being a Lutheran is about becoming a better person, about learning about current worldwide problems. Through my experience in traveling and going to public schools and various other activities, I've came across many cultures and religions and after every time someone shared their cultural identity with me, I felt the gap between what I knew about them and what their cultural and religion is truly about. Through the traditions, holidays, and beliefs, I learned that as a Lutheran, I too have a culture. I may not show it on a day-to-day basis, but, there is, but, but it's there, and it's something that I hold close in my life. Another thing St. Luke's has taught me is my, is my ability to question my beliefs my thoughts, and my actions. For example, I never really thought about my belief in God before this class. I never really thought, is there someone above me? Is there a higher power? I say this because I really, I really know, I didn't really know what I believed at this time. But at the same time, I knew that there was someone there. Sometimes at a big sports game or event, I would ask myself, please, please let us win. Sometimes when I'm fishing, I would ask if I could catch a fish or something like that. But to whom was I asking? I've always been connected to Christianity through my family and St. Luke's. It always brought me closer to my family, my classmates, and other Lutherans. And I'm thankful for every single bit of it and hope to continue my journey at St. Luke's. Lastly, our lives are full of communities. I personally have multiple commu- communities in my life. I have a community within St. Luke's, my football team, my school, and my family. There are also subgroups within the communities. And as for St. Luke's, my ninth grade confirmation class has become a small but important part of my St. Luke's identity. And I just wanted to thank my classmates for their support and friendships. I also want to thank my teachers as well for all the time they have put in for us. They have done so much for us, including taking us on trips, doing fun activities, doing services. I also want to thank my entire family. They are always there for me, even when we don't agree. They will always be there for me, just like God. I want to thank my mom and dad for always taking care of me and supporting me and aiding me through my adolescent years. They've taken so much time just for me to succeed. All the time they have taken dropping me off at sports, school, confirmation, friends' house, and even if I wanted to go fishing, they would always make time for me. As for my grandparents, I want to thank them as well for taking such good care of me. I'm so grateful for having grandparents that truly love and care about me. They feed me. They spend time with me. They do everything I could possibly want a grandparent to do. They even pick me up at, and drop me off at sports events whenever my parents are busy. Overall, Christianity has taught me multiple lessons and, I'll continue t- and will continue teaching me through my adolescent years. I'm so grateful to be a part of St. Luke's Church, and I hope that I continue to have joyful memories here at St. Luke's. In the beginning of confirmation class, I barely knew anyone. I knew the people I went to school with, but that was about it. As the class went on, I bonded with some of my classmates. I got to know them better. I also felt like I got to know the pastors and helpers out too. I felt like I could just talk and have a good time with this group. I felt like I learned a lot in this class through all the lessons that we watched and listened to. I felt like I was finally learning about God. When I went to church when I was little, I felt like I didn't understand anything, but going through confirmation class, I felt like I was starting to understand. I always wanted to go to confirmation when I could, 
It was fun learning about God with friends around you. Sometimes I couldn't go to confirmation class because of sports, but when I could, it was, it was a great time. Even without going, sometimes I still feel as if I learned a lot. I do not know everything about God, but I still want to learn more. Just because confirmation class is over doesn't mean that I need to stop learning about God. I want to keep learning about God. I want to keep learning about being a good Lutheran. The only way, and the only way believing in God has affected me is positively. I love God, and I know he loves me and will protect me. I know that he will protect the people I love and will always be by my side. As I listened, I was reminded of an ancient tradition among our Jewish brothers and sisters, uh, the bar mitzvah, or also now the bat mitzvah, when a young person stands up and says, today I am an adult. I claim my place as adult, an adult within your community, within this community. And certainly, I've heard that this morning. Today, I am an adult. Thank you. It's a good day to remember the affirmation of baptism, to celebrate confirmation, this day of reformation, where we remember Martin Luther. For Martin Luther in this small catechism, which, of course, you are now experts on the small catechism, right? No response. In a small catechism, gave us instruction for daily prayer. And what he said is that every day we make affirmation of our baptism. We get up in the morning and we begin by making the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, remembering that we are baptized. And then we offer the Lord's Prayer and the prayer for God's guidance throughout the day and then go off to our daily work. Because we know we are held by God, we are the baptized children of God. Every day, you and I have the opportunity to make affirmation of our baptism. What we celebrate today is these four young men who publicly before us offer a witness, who offer the affirmation of their baptism the affirmation that they too will make every single day of their lives. We thank you for your witness. Amen.
Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these young adults, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. I present these young men who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Daniel Isaac Hansen, Tyler Lloyd Nashen, Samuel Frederick Stelter, Nolan Paul Weber. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these siblings in Christ, whom you have made your own by word and water in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I invite all here assembled to profess your faith in Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confirmands, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the world. If so, please respond. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Oh, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these young adults in Christ and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, please respond. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We have thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Amen. The congregation may be seated. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. John 3.16. Isaac writes, Jesus to me is the Messiah who suffered so we could live today. He showed the world that God should mean something in a good way to everyone.
Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Daniel Isaac the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his suffering, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Do not, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Isaiah 41.10 Tyler writes, Over these past three years, I have become a better and more religious person. I understood that God is with us, and no matter what happens, he will always be there to support me and my decisions. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Tyler and Lloyd the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, bring him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Isaiah 40, 29. Sam writes, Last summer I went to Philmont, New Mexico. On the fifth day we were going to climb a mountain. I felt like I wasn't ready and I didn't have the strength. When we were at the saddle of the mountain, I was really tired. But like in my Bible verse, when I finally climbed the mountain and then gave thanks to the Lord for giving me the strength to climb. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Samuel Frederick the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his suffering, give him patience in serving, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. Romans 8, 18. Nolan writes, with my confirmation class, I learned a lot about being a Lutheran. I learned that all you have to do is love God, he will love you back. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Nolan Paul the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. The congregation will please stand. Let us rejoice with these new siblings in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. As we gather together in the spirit, let us pray for the church and the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the world's words, in your steadfast love, receive our prayers. 
Caring for the church around the world, we pray for a spirit of ecumenical cooperation, for the health of worshiping communities, for our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Hear us, God our Savior. In your steadfast love, receive our prayers. Seeing before us your good creation, we pray for the repair of what we have harmed, for polar ice, for lands dealing with oppressive heat and drought, for fields ravaged by storms, hurricanes, and fires. Hear us, God our Creator. Facing many international problems, we pray, for the strengthening of democracies, for peaceful resolutions to conflicts, for the medical community, for racial justice within our nation and the world. Hear us, God, our mighty fortress. In your love, our Surrounded by people with great and hidden needs, we pray, for families and individuals frightened by the unknown, for students challenged to receive an effective education, for refugees and for prisoners. Hear us, God of hope. Aware of all who are sick and suffering, we pray, for all who face illness of any kind, for those who cannot afford adequate health care, for those we remember in this community, Sally Hansen, Jean Igo, Jane Miller, Carol Becker, Maritza Schiffers, also for Nancy Stahlberg, Bob Stefani, Joe Stutzman, Norman Vargas, Ann Warwick, Chelsea Zartler, and all those who we name in our hearts. Hear us, God our healer. In your steadfast love, receive our Mindful of all who have gone before us in this faith, we offer our thanks. For all the saints, famous and forgotten, for friends and family that we love, for the promise of everlasting life with you, hear us. God, our homeland. In your love, receive our prayers. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please greet one another.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Over the eons, your merciful might evolved our home, a fragile tree of life. You took on our flesh in Jesus, our healer. In Christ, you bring life from death. We remember his cross. We laud his resurrection. Broken like bread, he enlivens our body. Outpoured like wine, he fills the earth with goodness. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Strengthen us for our journey with this meal, the body and blood of Christ. Give us a future that trusts in you and cares for your earth. Empowered by your promises, we rise from our depths to praise you again. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Christ invites us to this table. Come, taste, and see for all are welcome here. Regardless of your church home or practice, all are invited to come forward to receive communion. This is the Lord's table. The Lord is our host. Please come forward at the direction of our hospitality ministers to receive the bread and then the cup. 
hearing the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Or you may also come forward to receive a blessing of the communion pack, if you prefer to receive that, or blessing of yourself. And you may be seated.
Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And just a few announcements to highlight. This afternoon, Congregational Life will host a not-so-scary Halloween party. Uh, light meal will be served, games for all ages. Fun begins at 4 o'clock. You may wear costumes or your Halloween socks. <laughs> you laugh. I'm going to wear mine. <laughs> Next Sunday, uh, it's time to fall back. So remember to set your clocks when I were back. Also next Sunday, we observe All Saints Sunday, which includes remembering the saints newly baptized this year, as well as those who have died in our congregation in the past year. A real special treat at the adult forum, Pastor Elizabeth Palmer will be here to discuss recent books, offer suggestions for personal reading and gifts and ideas. Pastor Palmer is one of the editors of Christian Century and has been a frequent guest here, guest preacher. So we look forward to welcoming her at, at 8.30. Uh, you, you can see from the weekly calendar that the building is beginning to bustle with activity, so we need to communicate clearly. Be sure to contact Debbie Sanger in advance at the church office if you need space for meeting or activity. If you need to make a change in the church directory, update a phone number, uh, please contact the church office by Tuesday. The community happenings insert, the e-messenger are full of information, our activities, our calendars. Uh, if you know of any updates, please again contact the church office. Finally, a word of personal privilege, I want to thank the brass. It is a thrill to have you here. I told my wife at my funeral, I want brass to play Bach on the way in and New Orleans brass band on the way out. So if you guys can recruit a tuba, because you can't do New Orleans brass band without a tuba, then you have a gig. <laughs> but just don't put it on your calendar yet. <laughs> Receive the blessing. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair. Bless you with truth and peace. May the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. <laughs>
peace. Oh, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.